Hello there, welcome to Fully Painted. Today we're gonna start a small series where I'll paint my Wood Elf for Blood Bowl. This is a team that I painted to an almost competition level and that broke me back a few trophies. The series is gonna be split up in three parts. The first one is gonna be on the very bright green spandex and the freehand. The second one is gonna be on the skin. Third one will tackle the NMM. Now with that out of the way, grab your brushes, we're going to the lab. Going back to the origins of this project, it came about from two different ideas. The first one was watching Squid Mars Miniature on his workflow for using contrast paint. He uses it uh, through the airbrush and uses two colors, one being a darker version of the first one. And he does uh, an overall base coat with the first contrast paint and then um, zenithal undershade from below with his different color which I found really cool and I wanted to test out on some minis of my own. The second motivation came about from a small exercise I did at a gaming store. We basically got to try out all the new contrast paints, which are really vibrant, I really like them, with some black and white paints as well to uh, do whatever we wanted. And I painted this off, which I really liked, especially the green skin. This was a combination of a first coat of Karandra green, followed by uh, some glazes of Eldery Emerald uh, to make the shadows. And then uh, for highlights, I just applied some whites on the spot that I wanted to highlight, followed by a glaze of Scorpion Green. I really, really enjoyed the result. I thought it made for some very vibrant, almost fluo green, and I wanted to try that out on something else. And that's where my Elven Blood Bowl team came about. And now I apply the recipe I mentioned on my elves. Uh, so I do, I apply the Karendra screen with the airbrush over a black and white zenithal. Just pretty much like uh, Squid Mar did in his contrast video. Uh, you don't really have to use the airbrush for this, of course. You can do this at the zenithal with a rattle can, black and white, and then just apply your contrast paint with the brush. It's not gonna get a smooth result like I do, did with the airbrush, but it's still gonna work fine. And then the second step of this recipe is to apply the uh, Eldery Emerald from above. It's, uh, we use a different contrast paint because this gives you uh, more interesting shadows here. Um, bluish shadows and a different green from the uh, main one. Which I think looks really good. And then the second step uh, I did, without the airbrush this time, is just apply my uh, white on the spots that I want to be hit by the light the most. And this is exactly what I did for my orc. And to know where to place the, um, the brush strokes, I just look at my miniature, I uh, orient it as if my eyes were uh, the sun, and that allows me to see where um, the sun would hit the volumes and the sh shape of the miniature the most. And that's the result. I could have smoothed it out with um, some whiting shot from the airbrush, but I like the comic book style I got from this. And then it's the glaze of Scorpion Green all over this. It's barely going to change the color of the Karandra screen, but it's going to have a very strong effect over the white bits. And I really, really like this. You can see it's turning almost fluo green at that point. And I think it looks really, really good. So yeah, give it a go. Now let's tackle the other bits on the miniatures. And I start with the leather bits. And uh, these, those bits are not that interesting to me, so I paint them very simply. First coat of contrast layer here, which is pretty much the way I paint most stuff that doesn't really interest me on a miniature, is a, fo a first coat of contrast and then some highlighting, which I do here by uh, adding some uh, flesh tones to my um, contrast color. And then I just focus on hitting the light correctly, or getting my light placement correct, which is more important to me. Um, I do a lot of tippy taps, as you can see with the, with the brush, uh, because I want to get some texture out of it. I'm way more interesting, uh, interested in correct light placement and, and texture 
than perfect blends, smooth blend. It's not my jam. It takes a lot of time and it's not the most impactful things you can do on a miniature. Unless you're called Flameon, of course. And um, I only do two highlight colors here for all the leather bits. Because I feel that's enough for such an uh, uninteresting part of the miniature. I want to spend my time elsewhere. Another interesting tidbits to paint here. Of the ball. So same logic, just a coat of contrast and then some highlights. I get the color the same way, just doing my adding my flesh tone to the my initial color. This is a bit more um, harder to use I would say with the brush because you get a very liquidy color. So I try to get most of the liquid off before painting so I can be more precise. But yeah, I'm mostly focused on getting correct light placement here. Using the same logic I did for the green spandex. This is a cylinder, so it should have a line highlight. Again, I do two highlight colors. That's the final look. And now on to something that I did care about actually, which is the magenta cloth. I chose the color not only because it's the opposite of my apple green on the color wheel, but also because I really really like this uh, magenta from Chimera, so I wanted an excuse to use it. I did the first um, base coat of it over the entire things I wanted to be magenta, so the the dick cloth, as some would call it, some gems and the masks as well. And uh, as you can see, since the magenta is very transparent, uh, the first layer is pretty much going to serve as a shadow color. And after that, I start highlighting by adding some uh, pale flesh to the magenta, which contains some white, so it's going to make it a bit more opaque. And I simply follow the light when I paint this, this color, uh, which is the most important bit for me. If you want to place high and paint some very high quality uh, miniatures, I really, really recommend that you start trying to learn how to paint lights properly. And now I'm in the sort of mid-tone phase of the light painting. I use a simple method, a method to help me paint light that I'm gonna explain more in more details when we get to the skin part of the, the series. But it's basically everything that's not directly hit by the light and that is not in shadow is gonna hit by get hit by my midtone. Which is what I'm doing here. And after that we're gonna keep adding my uh, beige my pale flesh to the magenta to get uh, more highlight to to bring the the highlight color even higher because I want to get a sort of satin look to this cloth and for satin ma materials you have to push the values of the highlight quite high the shinier the surface the higher the highlight Now I'm on to the second highlight, yes, as you can see here. I put it some on the side of the flappy uh, tabard as it's hit directly by the sun here. And some on the crotch area as well. But yeah, that's the logic I'm following. I keep looking at the miniature as if my eyes were the sun to figure out where to place my highlights. Uh, 
And now on to the decorations of the spandex. I did the player's numbers with some decals, um, or decals, however you pronounce it, uh, just using the ones from the box. This is a simple way to do de decals and I'm probably not going to do a good tutorial on this because it was like my second time doing this, but I just applied the the decal softener or whatever it's called and then once it's dry I just soften it a bit and then we varnish. But yeah, look up tutorials on this, that's gonna be way better than what I did. And after now to the main event, which is the freehand. As you can see I do a lot of simple swoops and, cur and uh, curls, but this is nothing very fancy. The main uh, important aspect here is to use a very flowy paint. And I made sure to not use pure black on this because I didn't want to draw the attention too much. So yeah, I used some X inks uh, primarily. And uh, this one is somewhat transparent, which I really don't mind. Because it lets the green show through and doesn't draw the eye, as I mentioned. And now the, um, the main idea here is to do a lot of swoops, a lot of motifs and patterns all over the spandex because as you can see right now uh, I'm doing a very poor, jo poor job of making them perfect looking. This is a very simple and summary job and I'm not that talented with the brushwork uh, to make very nice slash perfect looking curls. I'm just doing my best and trying to have fun and uh, avoiding some area, like I'm trying to not have a curl just go across the numbers, of course. But yeah, the main idea is to put a lot of them so that after a while your brain doesn't see the uh, individual curls, but just um, the, the, the overall pattern and ensemble of it and thinks that it is a more complex design than it actually is. Because right now I'm being very random with it. Just place them where I think it looks cool. And um, after a while, your brain will trick itself into thinking that this is a very complex job. Which it isn't! Once I'm satisfied with uh, the curve and swoops placements, I just add some tiny dots here and there to simulate some fruits or leaves or whatever. It's a bit of mix uh, of a mix between dots and uh, leaf motifs or whatever. It's just a, a dot, a circle with a, with a pointy bit, I guess, like tear-shaped um, patterns. And once again, it adds to this uh, overall noise that I'm focusing on to make the pattern look way more complex than it actually is. Uh, and I pretty much stole this pattern from the box art. But yeah, that's the main gist of this work. I'm not drawing a complex illustration and what have you, just drawing patterns. It's very chill. You should try it out. And that's the final result. As you can see, you just see patterns here and there not really stop stopping your eyes over one of them to analyze them deeply. You just think, oh cool, there's some more complex things going on. I did it as well on the war dancers, who are half naked, which are uh, sexy, I guess. Um, but I wanted to get more of a tattoo vibe from them uh, for those swells, so I just repeated the pattern, but I just added some flesh tones to my original paint and then just replicated what I did on the green spandex. Some more swoops and tiny dots. And trying obviously to avoid hitting the numbers as I previously mentioned. I am just letting my brain, my eye, my, um, my mind just lose and glow, go and flow, I don't know. And that's the final result. I really like it. And I hope you do too. Uh, as I said, the skin and the NMM is gonna be uh, following videos. 
but for now I'm really liking the look of the green spandex as with uh, as well as the, the the magenta cloth it's very punchy contrast you can see the uh, shiny satin effect I was going for in the middle guy here for the magenta cloth and the the punchiness of the spandex um, as I mentioned I really dig that the freehand is more of a um, it doesn't like punch you in the face and it's just more of a complexity added to the figure as you you see them and yeah I dig that I love the uh, dark shadows I got the color of the contrast the elderly emerald in the shadows I think it looks really good I like that I, you can see the brush strokes uh, for the uh, scorpion green here on this guy I think it looks really good but that's it for this video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. The next video in this series is gonna be a detailed tutorial on painting skin. If you don't wanna miss it, please consider subscribing. That's it for me, so until then, I hope you stay adventurous and that you keep painting, because painting is cool.